Hiya listeners, my name is Jilly, and you're watching the Mystery Listeners Club, where we chat about mystery, suspense, and thriller audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks all the time, and hopefully I'm not the only one. In today's video, I'm going to be going over one of my favorite audiobook series of all time, Detective Kim Stone Thriller Series. I'll also be doing my makeup at the same time because I haven't done my makeup yet today and sitting alone in a room talking to a camera by myself is still weird to me and I need to do something with my hands. I'm like Ricky Bobby. I don't know. I don't know what to do with my hands. So I'm going to do my makeup. For those of you that haven't listened to these books or aren't familiar with them, um, they are written by Angela Marsons and narrated by Jan Kramer. The great thing about this series is that it's extremely consistent. So Jan Kramer narrates all of the books and each book is just as good as its predecessor. I can't think of any individual book that falls flat in comparison to the others. Um, yeah, they're all just very consistently good. I just realized my face is super, like, I don't want to say moist looking, but it's because I have moisturizer on, so in case you were wondering, I'm not sweaty. If you love audiobooks as much as I do, then you'll love the fact that this series has a total of 15 books in it. I've listened to 14 of the books, book 15, Twisted Lies came out uh, last month, I think on the 13th, so I haven't listened to that one yet. Whenever a new book comes out in a series that I follow, I like to re-listen to the first book if I haven't listened to the series in a long time, or if I have listened to the series recently, then I'll listen to just the last one to two books in the series just so that I get like a refresher before I listen to the new one. So about the series. These books revolve around a CID team that's located in Halezoen, England. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. They often refer to it as Black Country. I don't quite know where it gets that name from. I think it was mentioned in the books, but now I can't remember. The team consists of D.I. Kim Stone, who's the main character. She's a Kawasaki riding detective, and if you don't know what a Kawasaki is, it's a type of motorcycle. So she's a badass, as they say. She's honest and straight to the point. She was moved from team to team because she wasn't really a team player before, but you find out that it's mainly because her leader, her leadership and uh, team members were either really shitty detectives or they were uh, sexist. She doesn't really start being a team player until she joins uh, DCI Woody's team. And I forgot to mention that he's the one that is the leader of this team and then it goes uh, him and then Kim under him. He always pairs her with uh, another team member, Bryant. He does this because she is very brash and Bryant is very easygoing and he gets along with everyone really. So they kind of balance each other out. DS Bryant, I don't think that the book has ever stated what his first name is. I tried re-listening to the, the earlier books, even the prequel, and they just call him Bryant. Everyone calls him Bryant. And I'm pretty sure Bryant is his last name, so. He is the oldest member in the team, as far as age goes. Um, and he's, like I said, he's always paired with Kim and one thing about him is that he has zero ambition or uh, desire to move up in the ladder 
like move up in his career. He's perfectly fine being a DS forever, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, ambition isn't for everyone, or not everyone has ambition, but he is a good detective. One thing I that annoys me about him, though, is that he's like constantly questioning Kim and her decisions or her gut instinct, and more often than not, she's right, so why does he keep doing it? I don't understand. It really makes me annoyed. DS Kevin Dawson is close friends with his other teammate, Stacy. He has good gut instinct like Kim. Oftentimes she'll compare him to herself. It's just that he acts on his instinct before he really thinks about it and that kind of leads him into trouble from time to time. Deep down he's a really good person and he's very ambitious like the complete opposite of Bryant. He wants to move up in the ladder and he wants to move up really fast. Maybe faster than he should. He really looks up to Kim and he appreciates her tough love approach to him. They always joke that like Stacy and Kevin are the kids and Kim and Bryant are the parents. They're just like a really cute team slash little family. You see Stacy Wood, uh, she's one of my favorite characters besides Kim. She's timid at first and quiet, but she's a very good detective and she really grows into her own uh, over the course of the books. She usually stays in the office doing the tech side of the job, so like background checks, breaking into people's phones and looking through their computers through for deleted files and stuff like that. So each book focuses on a main case and then usually also includes a side case, like one or two side cases. And these smaller cases usually end up tying into the main case somehow, either by being solved because one of the team members realized something from the, solving the main case, or they end up actually being a part of the main case. So, so why is it one of my favorite series? Well, it's one of my favorites because the characters are so well developed and likable. You don't really find that too often where the characters themselves are just very likable. I really identify with Kim. I enjoy the banter between Stacy and Kevin. And I like that there is a lot of talk of dogs and the love of dogs, which is weird, but I mean, I like what I like. It's one of the reasons why I really like the books. Each book is great as like a standalone story. However, listening to the books in sequence makes them that much better, in my opinion. Over time, you grow attached to the characters and become invested in what happens to them. Another reason why I really love the series is that Angela Marsons isn't afraid to hit you where it hurts. And let me explain. So I am, I'm gonna go into detail about that in the spoiler section at the end of the video because I don't want to ruin or spoil anything for you guys if you are gonna listen to the books. But just know that Angela, she keeps you on your toes throughout the books to the point where the books don't get redundant or stale over time and they don't get repetitive. They're not like, oh, okay, now they're gonna catch the killer, now he goes to jail, and now they do this, and then happy ending. I have no idea if this looks good on camera or not. I can't see without my glasses, so I'm hoping for the best. So for themes of the books. Like I mentioned, each book has a main case that it focuses on. So these cases are all unique from book to book, so the stories don't get repetitive or stale. Common themes throughout the books are murder, of course, religion, cults, revenge plots, 
sociopaths and mental illness in general, child killers and children that kill too, drug and people trafficking and and more. Just from those topics alone, you can tell that the series is full of interesting stories that keep you entertained and captivated. Or at least they do for me. In conclusion, I hope it's clear why I love this series. I mean, I really do love it so much and I hope that it piqued your interest enough to check it out if you haven't listened to it yet. I don't know anyone else that listens to this series, so it would be awesome if I had like uh, even one person to talk to <laughs> about this stuff. Now I'm going to go over the spoilers like I mentioned. If you're not interested in that, then thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye! Spoilers! 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 It's up and it's stuck! Last warning, here come the spoilers. I mentioned earlier that Angela Marsons isn't afraid to hit you where it hurts, and here is why. So from books, point five, because that's technically the first book, it's like a prequel. So from point five to book eight, you see DS Kevin Dawson grow as a detective and a, a person in general. Like at first he's very like snarky and just unlikable, but then by book eight, you really care about him. Um, and you start to understand his backstory and personality better. I personally just got attached to him being on the team. Well, at the end of book eight, book eight is called Dying Truth, Angela Marston is like, fudge your feelings because she kills him off in the most unexpected and tragic way possible. You don't hate her for it, or at least I don't hate her for it because Dawson went out on such a high note, but my goodness, I was really shocked that she did that. I'm glad she did though because now it's like no one is safe in the books. So going forward after Dying Truth, it's each book is even more suspenseful because characters that you love and are attached to could potentially die. With other series, it's just a given that your favorite character is going to be perfectly fine. But I liken this to, well, I mean, it's not as extreme, but it's kind of like Game of Thrones. Um, if you've read those books, it, don't get attached to any character in that book. Do not. I don't want to go into specifics about how he died because I think that that would ruin the whole story for you guys if you do end up listening to the book, but just know that he does die. And after Dawson's death, a new team member joins and his name is Penn. He was actually in a previous book and he helped solve a case that ended up saving one of the team members. So he's a very likable character. It's just he's sort of like Stacy in the sense that he's good at technology, but he's also good at working leads outside of the office. I really like his character, so it's unfortunate that when he first joins the team, they're very standoffish against him, especially Kim and Stacy. I mean, I get it, but Kim was like unnaturally mean for her character, but that changed by the end of the book. So the books after that, they're back to their little family team life. Okay, now the video is over, for realsies. If you stayed until this part, then leave a heart emoji, a heart emoji in the comments, just to let me know. I really appreciate you watching this video. You have no idea. This is my second time filming it, and I hope I did okay. It kind of felt like doing a book report, so yeah. I'll catch you listeners in the next video. Bye!